Welcome to my shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to rebuild a carburetor on a Farmall H. This is an international harvester carburetor. You can see I already have it off of my tractor. I hope at the end of this video, you'll have the confidence to rebuild your own carburetor. Now, a carburetor usually needs to be rebuilt when either it's leaking gas or your tractor only runs with the choke pulled part way out, just generally runs poorly. Those are all indications that it's time for a carburetor rebuild. This is fairly simple and I would imagine you already have the tools that you need in your shop. So this is definitely something that you can tackle on your own. Now to get started, you need to take the carburetor apart. There are a few screws around the top here. I'm going to take out the screws here to take off my throttle and my choke butterflies. I'm gonna take out my idle jet, my main jet, my bowl drain here, my fuel inlet, all that sort of disassembly. When I get inside, I'll take out the float, the needle in the seat, and then we'll go a little bit slower when we put the carburetor back together. I want to encourage you not to overlook this jet that is in the bottom of your carburetor. It's important to take that one out so that you can clean that passageway. Don't skip this one. In the top of your carburetor, you can use a pair of channel locks like this one to pull the Venturi out. When you pull the Venturi out, the rest of your gasket will come off and then you put your new gasket on your Venturi back in. You can see that I sandblasted my carburetor. You don't necessarily have to sandblast it if you feel like you can get it clean just with a can of carburetor cleaner. Use one with a nozzle on it so that you can clean out all of your passageways. Clean thoroughly, wear safety glasses and gloves while you do that. Follow your carburetor cleaner with a blow off nozzle. Do it two times if you need to. Don't be afraid to use the entire can of carburetor cleaner. Clean is your secret to success when you rebuild a carburetor. So don't skip on that step at all. Make sure that your carburetor is very thoroughly clean before you're ready to reassemble. Up on the top of the carburetor, you do have an ID tag right here. This is the tag that you're gonna wanna read so that you can order the correct kit for your carburetor. There are some other numbers on the carburetor and these aren't the ones you want. Look for this small brass tag here at the top. Inside here, you have a bushing for your throttle shaft. Put your throttle shaft inside your carburetor and see if it fits snugly like mine does. There's no play here. If yours fits snugly, I would recommend that you leave your bushing alone and not replace it even though the comprehensive kit comes with a new bushing. It's hard to replace. You need to drill it out and drive a new one in. So if you can skip that step, go for it. However, if yours is sloppy, then definitely replace it. I pulled mine out. I put it, a drill inside of there and pulled it out like this one. You can see I kind of destroyed it when I pulled it out. And then I used a quarter 20, three inch long bolt like this one. Then I took a nut and smoothed it off to use this as a driver to pound the bushing in until it was flush. You could do something like that as well. When you do, you might peen it over, so then you'll need a reamer to clean up the bushing. And once you've done all that, then you're ready to put your new Throttle shaft in, make sure that it slides in there and it fits well. It is directional, notice that that groove is back towards me and that's the way that it's gonna go onto the carburetor. Here we have the butterfly. So I'm gonna turn this up so that it's, um, the slot is open. There's a number on here and the number is going to face up. I'm gonna drop this down into the slot. I'm gonna use a pair of needle nose to try to get those holes lined up before I flip it over. Let's see how close I got. I got really close there, okay? Then there's two 
new screws, look for the screws that are flat across the top and beveled at the bottom. Those are the two screws that you're gonna use up here at the throttle. There are two screws that look similar to this for the choke and you don't wanna get them messed up. You might wanna use a self-starting screwdriver like this one since they're hard, especially if you have bigger hands. It's hard to fit your hands down in here and get those screws started, but stick with it. You can do that. Tighten up both of those screws and then you'll be set for your throttle shaft. When you are ready to rebuild your own carburetor, you're going to need a repair kit. We offer four different levels of repair kit, so let me go over them with you, then you'll know exactly what kit you want for your carburetor. The first is what we call our economy kit. This is just gaskets, needle, and seat. If your carburetor just basically needs a good cleaning, this is the kit you're gonna wanna go with. The next jump up is a basic kit. This has all the same pieces that you saw in the economy kit, but the most notable add is that you get a new throttle shaft, which does wear out, so this is a good kit. Even better Better than that though is what we call this complete kit. You get both the throttle and the choke shaft as well as a new emulsion tube, other pieces here. On this video I use the comprehensive kit which comes with the new butterflies, choke and throttle shafts, here's the um, plug for your drain, we have the new fuel inlet with the screen on it, lots of nice pieces here. If you want to do a very thorough job on your carburetor this is the kit that you'll choose and I'll show you in this tutorial how to put every single piece in. At the end, your carburetor is gonna run perfectly if you use this kit and install all the pieces correctly. This float is always sold separately. It's independent of the kits. Sometimes people don't need to replace their float. That's why we offer it separately so that you can um, save a little bit of money on the kit. However, if your float needs to be replaced, definitely add that to your cart separately from the kit and make sure that you have it for your repair. All of these parts are available on my website. It's farmtractorrepair.com. In addition to these carburetor parts, we also have Farmall H engine parts, as well as a nice selection of licensed Farmall products that you might want for yourself or to give to a friend. You can purchase my book, Farmall Cub Encyclopedia. All of those items are available on my site, farmtractorrepair.com. Your purchase on that site will help to fund future tractor tutorials. I have my new gasket here ready to drop on and then I have my seat. This has a tiny gasket underneath it as well so don't forget about that gasket. I'm gonna get it started with my fingers and then I have a deep well socket here which will tighten it up. After this, the needle will just drop right into the seat very easily. Oops, let me tighten that up. I'm gonna stick my Venturi on there because that's gonna hold my gasket into place and make it a little easier. Here's my needle, and then I have my new float here ready to go. This is my old float. You can see how corroded it was. If your float is um, corroded, if you shake it and you hear that there's junk inside, if it's dented, all of those would be reason to replace your float. So floats are always sold separately from a kit. So if you need a new float, don't neglect adding that to your cart when you purchase parts. Let me slide this float pin all the way across. Looks like I'm hung up on the very end here. So let me slide that through just like that. Specifications is that this float should be set at 1 and 27 30 seconds of an inch. I have a ruler that measures to the 32nd of an inch, which I'll use. If you don't have a ruler like this, it's close to 7 eighths. So that's how you can measure. Again, we're looking for one inch in 27, 30 seconds, which this one is right at on the money. If you need to make an adjustment to your float, just bend it up right here very carefully one way or the other, but usually it's okay just how it is. Lastly, I have my fuel inlet with the new screen on it here, ready to go back in. I'll tighten this up with a 5 eighths inch wrench. This power jet is ready to drop in. You want to make sure that you get it started straight. These are a little fragile, so when you're working with it, just work carefully, and then you wanna tighten it up all the way down. I use a pretty small screwdriver for that task. Next, we have our emulsion tube. Notice that there's a gasket on the end. I'm gonna drop that down into place, and then I'm gonna hold it with my thumb while I flip it over. Here's the end for it. There's another gasket that goes underneath there, and I'm gonna Get it started here with my fingers. That seems to be the easiest thing to do. Then once you get it tight, notice that there's a head on here for a screwdriver, which I can kind of hold together like that. And then I use the deep well socket on this end to tighten it up. It's a little bit to have that all in your hand at once, but you don't have to go super tight if you can get most of the way with your finger. So there we go. Tighten your emulsion tube up just like that. 
In the bottom of your carburetor near where the main jet is, there's a packing down here. You need to make sure that all the remains of your old packing are removed. You can use a pick like this one to completely clean that out. And then once you have, when you're doing the cleaning process, put the uh, nozzle of your carb cleaner right into that jet and make sure that it flows all the way up as it should. That is really important because this is where your main jet goes. So don't skip on this step. In the comprehensive kit, you get your new packing here. So I'm just gonna drop that down into place. You can see that there. And then this, once it's started, will drive that in. It's a little tricky to get started since that packing is right there, but stick with it. It will start. It actually starts really easy when the packing's not in there. So I know that it's a good fit. You just gotta get it just right. There we go, okay? I think this was a half inch if I remember correctly. Nope, a little bit smaller than that. Let me try this one. 7 16 on there, okay? I'm gonna tighten that down all the way and then I have my new main jet here. I'm gonna screw this in until it bottoms out and then I'll turn it back out two full turns and that's gonna be a really good spot for us to start. I am prying the rest of this packing out down here at the bottom around the throttle shaft. There it goes. So that's out. I'm gonna use a pick just to make sure that I've got everything out. And I do, that looks clean. There's a new felt packing. I cut mine in half because in the kit it comes too tall. Then I have this that goes over top and I'm gonna set this just over it. And then I'm going to gently tap this into place. This is the same driver I used up top at the throttle shaft. Just like that, that looks really good. I'm gonna make sure that my shaft, oh yeah, goes in there. I like that, very good. Okay, that's all set. Next to this, I do have a little spring down in there and I got a new spring in my kit, so I'm gonna see if that'll come out. Yeah, okay, there's the spring. The little ball bearing came out automatically on its own. So here's where the new spring will be and then I'll have a new ball bearing that will drop into place next. Over here, I'm gonna put my idle needle into place. I'll screw this down all the way and then come back out one full turn. And then lastly, I have this drain set to go here in the bottom and I'll tighten this up all the way. My choke shaft is in. You can see that my detent ball is in place and it springs back and detents like it should. Your choke shaft should work the same way. The butterfly is directional, so it only goes in one way. If you're having trouble getting it lined up, you probably have it in backwards. Once that is all set, I think that was everything for the bottom. Here's the top. I did put my idle set screw in up here, and I have a gasket here. This looks good to me, so we're ready to drop our two halves together. When I do this, I'm just being really careful of the float. I don't wanna drop this on there and um, move the float out of position. So I'm gonna set this into place. I'm stuck on the Venturi. So let me slide it in there, just like that. And then this screw came up from the bottom. These two come from the top down. And notice that I do have the new little lock washers underneath all three of my screws. I'm gonna tighten these up and then I'm ready to put it onto the tractor. My carburetor is on the tractor. Now I'm ready to start it up and see how it runs after the work that we've done. It sounds so good. I'm pleased with the way that it runs. Notice that I didn't need to use the choke. My carburetor runs good both at a idle and full throttle. It has good throttle response. Those are all things that I wanna check after I've done a carburetor rebuild. If for any reason yours is running too rich or too lean, you can make small adjustments to those needles, the main needle or the idle needle, depending on which needs work. Turn those needles just a little bit at a time. A quarter turn makes a big difference. Do a little bit of fine tuning and your carburetor will run well for you. I hope that this tutorial gives you the confidence to rebuild your own carburetor. When you're ready to do so, please purchase the parts on my site, farmtractorrepair.com. Also, if you'd like to, you can subscribe to our channel as we release new videos all the time.